One of the first shows that we had done was in Japan, in 30 years ago. Well, I think the Stadium Project is a very important project uh, for Tokyo because that was done as an comp international competition, which we won. It was a very serious team of people, of engineers, of, of architects, who look at this work for two or three years. So it's an enormous investment. I think it's a very important project because it has a life beyond the Olympics. It has a legacy uh, life. The team are a credible mix of international architects with sports planning and Japanese experience. Zaha Hadid Architects with Arab Sports won the international competition to design the new national stadium for Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. ZHA have experience in working successfully with clients to design projects which have been built on time and to budget. ZHA designed the London Aquatic Centre for the London 2012 Olympic Games. The project was successfully redesigned to achieve a revised budget. The design used a mix of temporary and permanent seating to become one of the most successful venues of the London 2012 Olympic Games. The venue has since become very popular and well used by the public. Arab Sports have extensive stadium design experience, from the new multi-purpose stadium in Singapore's Sports Hub to the Beijing Olympic Stadium in 2008, the Allianz Arena 2006, and the City of Manchester Stadium 2002. We have been collaborating on the design with four of the largest design consultants in Japan, led by Nikin Seke. Between them, these Japanese offices have designed three of the stadiums for the FIFA 2002 World Cup in Japan. The design was inspired by the past and future of Japan. The site is the site of the Tokyo 1964 Olympic Stadium, and it's an appropriate place to build a new national stadium, which aspires to create a building which exceeds mere function to become a symbol of Japan's renewal and long-term optimism for the future. The basic components of stadium design are extrapolated to connect the stadium to a specific context of Guyane and beyond to Japanese culture as an expressive but efficient design. The design is derived from the articulation of structure and circulation, where a structure is required to create roof cover over long spans without columns and a lot of circulation is required to safely move 80,000 people in and out of the stadium. Proposed for practical reasons, the primary structure of two keel arches have a similar intent in silhouette and symbolism to traditional Japanese landscape bridges, so that the new stadium is based on a key motive from traditional Japanese landscape design and an appropriate addition to the sports landscape of the Gaian area. With cross ties, nature is further embodied in the design where the express structure creates a distinctive flower petal geometry so familiar in nature and to the Japanese public who have a close affinity to nature and the passing of the seasons. The flower petal geometry of the roof is continued into the facade where the structure is not only expressed but inhabited. A series of diagonal stairways and elevated walkways are developed into an envelope of the stadium so that it functions as a stadium on event days and every other day it's an extension of the pedestrian landscape of the Gaian area allowing extended walks and elevated views over Tokyo. All of these public walkways are lined with Japanese timber giving a tactile familiarity to the stadium which ties it back to the fundamental material of the Japanese environment and experience. The majority of facade is broken down by the petal geometry and clad in Japanese timber louvers so that the overall effect at pedestrian level is a subtle interplay of Japanese timber cladding giving the experience to the visitor of a direct resonance to the tree-lined landscape of Guyane and Japanese culture. The majority of roof structure is provided by catenary beams which resonate the innovation by Kenzo Tange with his catenary beams for the Yayoji National Gymnasium. 
we aspired to make the new stadium connect visually and symbolically with this Japanese icon of optimism, so that Tokyo 2020 leaves Tokyo with a stadium as well conceived and as beautiful as this gymnasium from Tokyo 1964. The roof is covered in transparent lightweight fabric. The roof allows daylight in, allowing good turf growth, whilst allowing the spectators to experience the pleasure of daylight as they watch the events. At night, the stadium will glow and take on the appearance of a Japanese lantern. Together, the arches, catenary beams and lightweight fabric combine to create an overall effect that represents the traditional craft and modernist innovation of Japan, so that it creates a renewal of the Japanese spirit of optimism for the future based on their confidence of their past. Our new national stadium design has been two years in the making and it is ready to start on site this year. It can be ready for the Rugby World Cup of 2019 and the test events before the Summer Olympics of Tokyo 2020. To start the design from scratch is an unnecessary risk which we think the government should reconsider if its aim is to achieve a lower price than 252 billion yen. We believe the answer is to introduce more competition between the contractors, but to not lose the benefits of the design. The site is complicated and the majority of design will remain valid because the basic requirements of seating capacity and support facilities will remain the same. A new process should be used to get a lower price, but it should not waste the design work done to date. A new process will only allow a very short design period, and by the time certainty on design and price is determined, it will be too late. Instead, change the current design now to get certainty on costs. A new process to find a contractor will result in the same limited number of Japanese bidders that competed for the project last year. Even if the tender is open to international contractors, only one of the five large Japanese contractors will be able to qualify or win the bid. We understand that there are only five contractors in Japan who will have the necessary stadium experience and size of turnover to qualify to bid for the project. Two of these five contractors worked on the project and produced the price of 252 billion. There is limited competition available, and this is the underlining issue to be tackled. We think the new process should concentrate on achieving competitive bids based on the existing design with the option to provide cost savings to achieve the project on time and on budget. This way the design is not wasted and the risk of failure to get value for money is avoided. The current design is defined by the client's brief, which is an outcome of their legacy business plan which needs to generate revenue from key stakeholders such as the J-League. For the past two years, the client's brief was for a multi-purpose stadium with an adjustable seating bowl which is able to switch sports modes between athletics or football with an operable roof to close the roof opening and allow concerts. If the government decides to change the brief to a fixed athletic seating bowl of 80,000 seats, it will not be sustainable. If football is watched from the distance of an athletic seating arrangement, it's too far away to create atmosphere and it will not be popular. An athletics formatted bowl is not acceptable to FIFA and will not be acceptable to J-League for national football events. To be sustainable, the investment needs to be focused on long-term usage after the Olympics and that means being able to accommodate football which will be the largest user and revenue after the 2020 Games. There are many options available to achieve this objective, but there are certain key parameters to stadium design which we think need to be understood. To illustrate these parameters, we will use a cross-section of the stadium which encapsulates the basis of stadium design. It's important to understand that the size and volume of stadium enclosure is not only determined by the seating capacity. There are other factors which will need to be incorporated in the new stadium, regardless of its seating capacity. And these factors also determine the size, cost and sustainability of the stadium. To host the Olympic Summer Games, 
television requires high definition lighting to be able to broadcast. This requires the stadium to incorporate lighting at a height of 50 meters surrounding the field of play. It's a large field of play with many track and field events occurring in different locations. Each of these events needs to be lit to the same high standard. The lighting also needs to work for football, which is a different and smaller field of play. This requirement means either above or below the roof, an extensive gantry needs to be built at a height all around the field of play. Regardless of seating capacity, this lighting is required. The extent of roof cover over the seats is directly related to the amount of seats. Its fundamental purpose is to protect spectators from the weather. In the case of Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, the weather is hot and humid, so the roof should provide as much solar protection as possible to make the spectators comfortable. If the stadium is to work for football, the extent of roof should be determined to cover all of the seating in football mode. Building a roof once to work for athletics and football will result in the best return on the investment and mean the stadium is sustainable in the long term. Any stadium will host a limited number of events in any year, and stadiums are difficult to make work as a business. For the new national stadium, it was projected it would only host 40 events, including 10 concerts in any given year. There are potentially 80,000 customers at any event, so it's imperative that the stadium design maximizes the amount of revenue that it makes at each of these events. In modern stadium design, this means more dining facilities within short travel distances to increase the duration of stay and spend by spectators to any single event. This means that in addition to the fixed seating, there needs to be facilities in close proximity to all seats to ensure revenue is generated. The current design is designed on this basis, and it should be retained to be sustainable not only in terms of usage, but also revenue generation. The site is a very constrained urban island site, surrounded by roads on all sides with extensive level differences to navigate and height limitations for any development. The complexity of managing to fit the field of play and seating bowl on the site, along with arranging level access in multiple directions, means that there are very few design options available. Our current design is optimized for this particular site. Having investigated the site for two years, we have researched and worked to produce the most feasible long-term solution for the site. The site area is small, so the design has been optimized to create as much external precinct area available as possible for crowd flows by allowing the non-ticketed concourse inwards to create a compact footprint and safer site for crowd management. We have tested many bowl options, including the use of temporary seating. We proposed an option in 2013 to the client to achieve some of the 80,000 seating capacity by using temporary seats. This option was rejected at the time as the client's brief was and remained to have 80,000 permanent seats in Legacy. We know from direct experience in London 2012 that mixing temporary and permanent seating on a constrained site is difficult and it is not a way to save costs. It is a valid option if the long-term objective is to achieve a lower permanent seating capacity. This is the reasoning behind the success of the London Aquatic Centre, which was reduced from 17,500 in 2012 to 2,500 after the Games. The Sydney Olympic Stadium used 30,000 temporary seats. Although conceived as temporary, they were built to similar standards as permanent stand to achieve compliance with code. They took a significant percentage of the overall construction budget and took longer than anticipated to convert to the legacy stadium format after the Games. We should learn from London and previous Olympics on the use of temporary seating. The reasons for choosing this option need to be determined not to save costs or time, but to satisfy the long-term business plan after the Games. The option remains possible with the current design, and the keel arches of the current design are similar to the structure designed for the same purposes in Sydney. We have developed the design to turn the requirements of the brief and site into benefits for the local community, Tokyo and the nation as its national stadium. To start, and given the site constraints of the site in size and height, we have produced the most compact bowl footprint possible for a multi-purpose stadium design. Using Arab Sport's experience of previous Olympic stadium design, 
The design achieves a more compact design to fit the site, allow more space for safe passage on the precinct, whilst achieving better proximity to the field of play and better quality of view for all spectators by comparison to the previous Olympic stadiums of Beijing in 2008 and London in 2012. The compactness of the design has brought spectators significantly closer to the action in both athletics and football formats and provided them with an enhanced quality of view when compared to London and Beijing. The result is a very efficient sports-focused stadium design which has been optimized for this specific site. We have been aware since our competition submission in 2012 of the sensitivity of the site location with respect to the size of the stadium. This is the reason why we proposed a saddle seating bowl as opposed to a flat top bowl. A saddle seating bowl is shaped like a saddle, which means it's got a varying height and its benefits are twofold. The first is that it allows the majority of seats to be positioned in the most popular location along the middle of the field of play and requires less seats at the ends. The result is more seats that are easier to sell. The second advantage of the saddle bowl is that externally, the pedestrian perception of the stadium is much reduced. Where the inclined elevation of the stadium comes down as low as 24 meters and rises to a height of 44 meters, so that from most viewpoints, it will look and feel like it's lower. By comparison, a flat top bowl would be a constant height of approximately 40 meters, which from all viewpoints will look and feel like a wall of 40 meters high. The saddle bowl profile allowed the development of a unique additional public feature, the sky bridge. This feature of the design is not essential to the stadium functionality, but it's a gift to the public realm of Guyenne. The sky bridge is an elevated walkway following the saddle bowl profile. It allows a daily usage of the stadium with elevated views and it connects it into the daily walk or runs of the public in the Guyane area. The sky bridge will be open every day, creating more direct access with the stadium than its event schedule. It was intended to allow the stadium to become a more used part of the city fabric on a daily basis and more integrated into the promenade culture of the Guyane area. With our experience of previous Olympic deadlines, it was clear that the stadium design should have advantages in saving construction time. We propose keel arches, which span the longitudinal direction of the field of play, create column-free views, and rest on the ground. As they rest on the ground, it means that the arches can be built in parallel to the seating bowl. We believe this approach will save three months in construction time compared to a sequential build of bowl first and then the roof. This time saving will be critical in achieving a fixed deadline and it will have cost saving benefits as well. This design benefit did not materialize in the joint venture bid, but it remains possible under a new bidding process. The efficiency and cost of the keel arch design is possible to measure by comparing its tonnage to other stadium roof constructions of similar span lengths and seismic conditions as Tokyo. We undertook these studies and the keel arch is an efficient and cost-effective solution with many benefits. Before defining a new budget for the stadium, the current price submitted by the contractors should be better understood. It was not the price of the design as we have described, it was a price based on considerable emissions from that design. The price of 252 billion did not include for the operable roof, nor the moving seating tiers, and only a partial enclosure of concourses. It was therefore already the market price of a fixed athletic stadium of 80,000 permanent seating. Save of the sky bridge, 252 billion yen is the current price in Tokyo for a basic 80,000 stadium on that site. A new process needs to change the market conditions in Tokyo, not the design. It should also be understood that the immovable deadlines, such as the Olympics, combined with a limited competition in the marketplace, create inflated prices. The determining factor in the price is the market and the demand on materials and labor. The design is not the determining factor in these circumstances. Rather, the design should be seen as the only way to achieve value for money in the market. Without a design as a contractual commitment, as much as time and cost, there will be considerable risk to achieving value and return on the investment. 
The current design can be redesigned to achieve a lower budget, but it should be retained in principle so the Japanese public achieve this value from the market and they get a long-term return on the investment. Giving the design responsibility to the contractors means that there is no real definition of value or quality except for a price and time schedule. A new concept design submitted with a price cannot be trusted after five months of design work. It takes much more time to determine a new design with complete price certainty, and by the time that certainty is achieved, it will be too late. The Japanese public will get less for their money with this approach. So why take the risk? There is a design which will achieve quality, and it can be changed to meet a new budget. Why risk everything when outcomes are so uncertain? Further cost savings can be considered, such as omitting air conditioning for the seating or omit the sky bridge. But the stadium design is compact and efficient. It cannot be improved upon unless the fundamental criteria of seating capacity alter or a more competitive bidding situation is created to lower the price. Tokyo should learn from London 2012 and its 2012 Olympic Stadium. The London Stadium was design and built. As a comparative cost to the 252 billion yen price for the Tokyo Stadium, it cost 218 billion yen. No one can think that the London Stadium represents value for money. The design is very basic and the operation will be permanently compromised by its conception. It was built in 2012 as a fixed athletic stadium with 80,000 seating. The upper tier of 55,000 seats was supposed to be dismantled afterwards, so all facilities were placed on the ground with long travel distance. This mode cost 138 billion yen. After the Olympics, to make it sustainable, it needed to be modified to work for football. So a moving tier was introduced, the roof needed to be extended, all of the steelwork needed to be rewelded. These amendments cost a further 70 billion yen, taking the total cost of the London Stadium to 218 billion yen. And it will remain a compromised stadium, designed only for athletics and adapted retrospectively to accommodate football. In football format, it will never generate the intensity of a true multi-purpose stadium bowl, and the extended travel distances to facilities from the upper tiers will make these seats hard to sell. Tokyo should avoid these mistakes and use the current design to achieve long-term sustainability and value for money from the market by using the design which is efficient and adaptable to change. We understand the need for the government to undertake a new process to get a better price, but it should not take an unnecessary risk on the design, and it will get more for the taxpayers' money by retaining the current design. It is a unique design which has been thoughtfully developed over two years to be not only beautiful, but compact and efficient for this specific and special location in Tokyo. The current design encapsulates all of the lessons learned from our direct experience of other Olympic stadiums. This knowledge and experience should be retained so that Japan gets a stadium fit to be called its national stadium.